Good morning, good evening. So we are getting ready to start. We are just admitting a uh, few more people. Thank you everyone for joining us. It's uh, seven o'clock in the evening here in Sarajevo. Um, so I think now we're ready to we're ready to start. So my name is uh, Claudia Zini. I am the director of Kuma International in in Sarajevo. Um, I'm really, really excited um, to uh, be with you uh, tonight uh, on Zoom online uh, for the third edition of the Kuma International uh, Architecture Program. Um, we have a, a really exciting uh, month ahead of us. Uh, it is the first time uh, that uh, we are working uh, in dialogue with another country, which is uh, Palestine this year. Um, we've been dealing uh, mostly, I would say, with the uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina in the past three months, three years um, at Kuma. And I'm really, I'm really uh, glad and, and proud uh, that uh, this year we, we managed to um, establish this conversation uh, between uh, architects from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and architects from Palestine or architects uh, whose, uh, whose practices are, uh, um, are around, are happening around uh, Palestine. And uh, it's my duty as a director at Kuma to thank, um, to thank um, our partners and, uh, and donors. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Open Society Foundation uh, for their uh, generous support and for always believing in Kuma International and in our uh, projects, uh, for always uh, supporting us. Uh, I also uh, would like to express my sincere uh, gratitude to the um, Italian Embassy here in Sarajevo. Um, also, our dear partners in this uh, architecture adventure, uh, it's the Association of Architects of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, together with the new uh, partner that we have this year is the Yala project and I'm really really glad they are also on board and uh, our old uh, friends and partners at uh, Ideologia here in Sarajevo. Uh, so that would be it on my side. Uh, again I'm really glad that so many people join us uh, tonight and uh, it is my pleasure now to give the floor to my colleague uh, Leila Odubasic Novo. Uh, she's, uh, she's a colleague at Kuma and Leila is the director of the architecture program at Kuma that we established uh, three, uh, two years ago in 2019. And uh, Leila put together this uh, amazing line of speakers and she came up with the idea of working for the architecture month around the theme of borders and to connect, uh, to establish this uh, dialogue between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Palestine. So Leila, I'm really grateful to you as well, and I'm going to leave you the floor. Thank you, Claudia, <clears throat> and thank you all of you for being here with us tonight. I know that you're maybe a little bit zoomed out by now, by these two years, so uh, I really appreciate everyone coming here and, and joining us. As Claudia mentioned, this is our third annual Architecture Month. And just as a brief recap, in the first year, we were actually um, ex exploring local content and we were um, under the theme of Unfolding Sarajevo. And for those of you who are interested, we actually have a publication um, by the same title that records uh, the event and also some of the major thoughts, topics and essays. And it's available on by book uh, for, for any of you who might be interested to see more. Um, our second edition was entitled Architecture and Resilience. And we actually have recorded videos of all the lectures on our YouTube channel. So again, if you're interested in uh, seeing that, it's on the Kuma's website. You can go to Kuma's website and you can uh, follow the link from there to the YouTube channel. Um, tonight, um, I'm very happy to start off this third annual Kuma Architecture Month. And as Claudia mentioned, 
uh, we're dealing with borders this year. Um, and the title is Living Borders. So we will, so the, the whole month is kind of envisioned as an interchange uh, by focusing not only on the local context, which is Bosnia and Herzegovina for us, but also to create a dialogue between the architects and research, researchers whose practice is around Bosnia and Herzegovina and Palestine. And so we would like to examine the notion of borders from different perspectives. Through this dialogue, we hope to share points of overlap, learn from each other's experience, but also push the architectural discourse within the post-conflict architectural practice. And, and so rather than analyzing urban destruction and reconstruction through the lens of what the targeted places were or are, <clears throat> the task is to actually inquire about what its transformation does to the assemblage of the city. That is, how it affects a complex set of relationships with its various architectural, urban, natural, social, and technical elements. And so um, without further ado, I'm very um, happy uh, to announce our first speaker of the night, of, of, of the whole actually uh, month. So Dr. Haris Piplash will be opening um, today's uh, lecture and this whole um, event. And so um, maybe if um, Haris can join us on camera, I'm just gonna say a few words. Haris is a very impressive um, CV, so I'm gonna compress it a little bit, but um, if you look him up, you will see that his experience is very, very extensive. So um, Dr. Haris Piplash is the author and collaborator of several urban landscape and architectural projects in Germany, Switzerland, Denmark, Morocco, Eastern and Western Europe, Latin America, China, and other regions. I think, I think that covers most of the globe. Um, he was the editor-in-chief of two issues of the Journal of the European Federation of Landscape Architects. He was also the curator of the 15th Architectural Biennale in Venice and a keynote speaker at numerous international conferences. And he's also a member of the uh, ISOCARP, International Society of City and Regional Planners, the former Young Leader Chairman of the Ur uh, Urban Land Institute, nominator of the Aga Khan Prize for Architecture, and a member of the Advisory Board for Built Environment of the European Forum, Alpac. So he's also the initiator of the Reactive Sarajevo Urban Transformation Project. Maybe for the local context, that would be the most resonant uh, project that might maybe some of our uh, local uh, audience members might know him for. And so um, Dr. Piplash is also a research fellow currently at Politecnico di Milano, and he holds a master's of urban design from the Technical University of Berlin and a PhD from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, Department of Architecture. Currently, he co-directs the Swiss integrated urban solutions sector of Dries Sommers in Switzerland. And so again, uh, without further ado, um, I will give the floor to Haris, and he will be talking about uh, reconstructing Sarajevo, radical spatial transformations in a geopolitically contested urban laboratory. Haris, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Thank you, Leila, for this wonderful introduction, and thank you, uh, Claudia, for uh, the invitation, and thanks to and this large ecosystem you built around Kuma. I remember a few years ago when Kuma, as many of these um, activist, enthusiast, uh, visionary projects are small and I'm following Kuma's development uh, uh, throughout the years. And I'm delighted to see the, um, you know, the ecosystem of young architects, architects um, activists you gathered around and I believe um, this is the way to you know to discuss society discuss city and um, um, I also see uh, many many former collaborators friends uh, and in the audience which I send my best regards to and uh, tonight we were going to speak in English and we're going to uh, uh, interestingly enough focus on Sarajevo so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about my own hometown in English but uh, uh, I'm always delighted also to see this incredible international, um, let's attract attractiveness that Sarajevo is always, um, you know, somehow uh, being affected of and of this friendship and love, it's, it's, it's still surrounded. And I believe this is also a great asset, not only, you know, talking about investments, but talking also about the, the human and the relational capital 
that uh, you, Leila, Claudia, and the task force uh, are, are kind of bringing to the stage and happy to share some of my thoughts. Um, you know, it's not easy always to be the preacher in your own village, like they used to say. So there's, there's a saying in German, but I'm very glad to, you know, to, to look into what happened in my own city. And, and this is where uh, I think many Sarajevans who grew up there, um, not only in the 90s, but also before and after we realized that geopolitics is something that's being kind of put into your cradle and understanding and global phenomena and, um, you know, talking about borders, division, um, multiculturalism is something that uh, uh, if understanding it in Sarajevo as a, as a sort of litmus paper, uh, one, one understands almost the entire world. And, and this is why, why, of course, there are these options with Palestine, but I believe Sarajevo is an is a symbol or synonym for many of the societal, geopolitical, macroeconomic, and especially spatial uh, phenomena. And this is why I'm 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 going to focus on exactly these um, relations. What is the kind of um, turbulent, dynamic, and interesting and exciting history of the city, and how it uh, implied on its uh, local urban transformation? So. Uh, um, for that, I prepared a few images um, for you, and uh, but I'm, I'm more interested also in the discussion that we're going to have uh, later on or um, in in the, in the follow up uh, occasion. So you all, please feel free to to get in touch with me beyond this presentation. Um, so if I if I may. Um, share my screen now and it's always the the typical question in the zoom era whether you see my full screen okay very good um as we mentioned um re reconstructing i believe uh, you know, the situation of saray was a situation of a continuous d and you know unfortunately also destruction and this is why um you know talking about politics and talking about the radicals and you know live and and with in Sarajevo the, this radicality be, becomes somehow your, your mainstream but um you know without looking into into cities as as uh, and especially Sarajevo as a uh, as a laboratory as as if uh, the people who live in the city were some sort of like la laboratory rats but uh, you know, being a in the field of uh, urban planning, architecture, landscape architecture, you know that um, the academic dimension of this of your profession is not enough. So with that, um, we have also to look into the the kind of the applied research part of it. So how we can go out of there of our um, ivory towers and go into the real city and. This is um, what I attempted to do in my doctoral dissertation. And this is what the presentation is mainly based on this work that I conducted at ETH of Zurich, where um, I structured the, the development of Sarajevo into a um, you know, introduction where I talk a bit about my lens, how did I look at this city? And then um, you know, looking into it in zooming in into its modernist phase, uh, into its, um, let's say post-socialist era and of course the war uh, in between and is as um, you know what I did you see in the bottom of the screen the experiment or or attempt to um, engage with the realities of my hometown and also go beyond you know sitting in a library or writing a book so I believe that uh, all of us um, whatever um, professional background we come from it's about implementation and activism, and I believe that us who are built environment professionals should uh, should be part of this um, kind of active and proactive, uh, not only discourse but also um, you know implementation and activism inside the laboratories because we do not have a laboratory in our institutes like in Dexter's laboratory and all these cartoons. Our laboratory is the society, is the city, and this is where we have to engage. But I believe um, for, for also for me, you know, being aware of the history of the city, being aware of the complexities, it, it's mm, going deep into historical research, going to the era when the, uh, the, the Roman Empire got divided, uh, revealed some incredibly 
uh, comparable insights in terms of politics, um, in terms of borders, uh, which you can see here, um, this very simple map um, that can be compared to the phenomena today. So um, this is a, I would say, continuous kind of loop that Sarajevo has, has been kind of a buffer zone and in between, in, in between different worlds. And this, in this case, you see these, uh, you know, to the two Roman empires, if you want the Byzantine one. And then the, um, again, talking about borders, the division of the church in 1054 uh, implied another um, border situation to the city. So Sarajevo um, continued being on the border now between two different also religious worlds. And uh, somehow you see always these capital cities that uh, play a role in, in, in our own um, uh, kind of backyard. Now here we, if we move into the 15th century, of course we do have Vienna then as this kind of third pole or third uh, kind of edge of, of, of the, or, um, you know, of the triangle and Sarajevo somehow um, moves again to, a, to be a part of a border. So it's this sort of, uh, you know, in theory, there's many of the of, of sayings as, you know, the border and the freedom of periphery and in this sense, it's what I highly believe that this uh, kind of freedom of periphery and this, uh, um, this unclear status for many centuries is, is something that kind of shaped our, uh, our multiculturalism, shaped our, our, our cuisine, shaped our language, shaped our music. And this is uh, why actually people come to see Sarajevo. So I, not many people, uh, what is good or bad, come for, for like a shopping tour or come for uh, some sort of generic commercial uh, kind of touristic, um, um, you know, um, uh, endeavor. People come to see our nature and it's, it's kind of different climate zones on this very small, um, you know, piece of geography of this world. And uh, people come to see um, who we are and people come to see this multi-layered uh, realities that are kind of implied um, being part of the periphery for many, many centuries. And if we just move on, for any Bosnians, this is just a, you know, what you learn in elementary school. But again, uh, if, if we look into uh, uh, more of the, and uh, now this valley, the, the Miljatska valley, if, if many of you will recognize it, of course, this is what um, the kind of geopolitics date to the city. And this is where we can now look into, and of course we do know this dense uh, kind of Medina style type of um, urbanism organically grown, if you want, with a, with a kind of solid charcha in the center and in the mahalas around. And then um, obviously, you know, and then kind of zooming again out into geopolitics, um, you know, many, many of us, uh, and also myself, uh, we know about this great so-called Bosnian crisis in, in 1908, where you see here the, 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 the Sultan, the, um, the emperor of Austria, Austria Hungary, Franz Josef, and the, the Bulgarian king on the, on the upper part and the middle part are kind of trying to, um, you know, to divide this region. And in this sense, um, Bosnia is as it is now, uh, very often on the title, on the main page of, of the Guardian, the New York Times and the Washington Post and the Deutsche Zeitung, it is still, um, you know, something that is an ever occurring phenomenon, which uh, which kind of shapes um, in our political and everyday life. And this is a, a slide that I'm always showing in Switzerland, uh, a slide that, um, uh, of course, the First World War and its um, origins, as we all know, uh, is something that also um, destabilized, and oh, this is a uh, um, uh, luckily, it did not end up in a, in a larger conflict, but even, um, you know, apparently stable countries like Switzerland with its um, and another kind of border country for many centuries being the kind of in-between zone between the Habsburg and the French um, experienced the similar phenomenon at Bosnia and Bosnia and Herzegovina experience. So, so in this sense, being this kind of border zone um, and, and being kind of uh, on, on the um, forefront of geopolitical uh, um, kind of hotspots uh, brings in, which you see here in Switzerland, of course, there's a German and a French speaking part. And in the First World War, this is in German, is where the more German speaking parts of Switzerland were 
a bit more favoring the German side and then the, uh, the French speaking Swiss, the French side. So in this sense, you know, geopolitics um, it implies our everyday life. And you see here even this um, uh, kind of symbolic um, uh, image, uh, this, this caricature of the, the, the wine and the beer drinking. So this is again a um, kind of um, border situation where Europe is still being divided into the kind of the beer and the wine drinking. So in this sense, you know, geopolitics and borders are shaping our life. And uh, in Sarajevo, of course, I mean, in these images, I apologize for my Sarajevans who know them very well. Of course, this, this results in a, um, you know, um, let's say in many countries, um, I have colleagues who call it colonial urbanism, right? So there's a, the Ottoman uh, dense city of the Charsha. This is of course the, the kind of organic Sunnah, if you want, the city. Uh, uh, that, that uh, emerged after or during the more than 400 years of, of, of Ottoman presence. And um, what is very interesting are these bird view images uh, looking in like down or looking from the east uh, to the west down the Milatska Valley um, from the Österreichische yeah, Nationalbibliothek. So this is on the Austrian National Library. The images that you can find where you see, uh, you know, the, for example, um, the, uh, the Orthodox Church, um, which uh, interestingly enough, uh, what I found um, is um, built, as we all know, in the late Ottoman you know, Empire, so in the 1860s, if I uh, remember correctly, but it was very interesting that it needed a, the, 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 the build, construction of this Orthodox Church in the city center of Sarajevo needed to, to be decided um, or co-decided or brought up to the agenda of the Sultan who co-financed it and then to the Russian Tsar who also paid, you know, a part of, of the construction costs into the pot. So, you know, constructing, being an architect or, or built environment professional in Sarajevo uh, in, the, in the history, you know, brings you to the incredible kind of heights of geopolitical uh, um, kind of balance acts that, uh, that I, I feel unprecedented in, 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 in Europe at least. And in this sense, you know, again, zooming in into this urbanism or the infrastructure development. And now we have um, the, the Austro-Hungarian period. You saw this image before it was from 1878. And now we do have a, an image that shows the kind of new city and urban expansion towards the West, very interesting. You know, the Charsia, of course, for, for the ones who don't know, uh, was, uh, was also one of the very important stops of the caravan Sarai route to Istanbul. And then interestingly enough, which you see in the, in the middle part of the, um, of the slide, the new main train station that was constructed by Austro-Hungary, Austro-Hungary uh, was um, constructed more down to the West and it's kind of, this is what, how Sarajevo, despite its first uh, railroad that uh, were built during the Otto late Ottoman times, and it's very, again, active late Ottoman dynamic period. It's, it's where Sarajevo was not only kind of geopolitically, symbolically, metaphorically connected to the West. This is where it got infrastructurally connected to the West and with, with Vienna and, and the rest of, of Central Europe. So, so here you see kind of, this micro location in the Sarajevo Valley moves from east to west and then kind of goes into the, the big kind of west and northwestern route. And yeah, of course, um, you know, there are these images of Marin Dvor and it's kind of symbolic um, that Marin Dvor itself, right? The building on the left, which you see here in the construction, the first public transport in this sense with the, with the, with the tramway. And um, the first, um, if you want, uh, industrialized architectural um, production, which, um, if I if I may simplify now, uh, um, you know, um, made all the all the, if if you talk about the Ottoman period, all the all the people who had this traditional knowledge of building, right, um, traditional kind of organic, if you want, also with it all, and and I'm not going to talking about that. There's many books about that. The Bosnian house, right? About its kind of intimacy and its courtyard and then the furniture. But, um, you know, talking about skills, handcraft to design, and let's say, no, let's stay with public buildings, it was completely obsolete from one day to another when the Austro Hungarian building code arrived, right? When it uh, kind of building material arrived, August Braun, and, and this is Marienborg, this is a Marienhof, the 
the residency for that he devoted to his wife and his brick factory that is located in today's Tiglane is something that um, that that uh, we, uh, we we all know. But you know how all, how did all these um, architects and craftsmen feel when they were suddenly obsolete when a complete new you know a building code and standards and materials arrived uh, to to build this new city. And this is again in um, 1910, um, 30 years after um, this image that you show a couple of slides ago. So here we see a kind of densified, more urbanized um, um, city with regulated waterways, with public transport, with the first public space. And many of, of the former um, Muslim graveyards were turned into public uh, parks. I mean, old Sarajevans know that. Um, so Sarajevo experienced, even though the climate stayed the same and more or less the people stayed the same, of course, many of them left to, 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 the, to the kind of still um, kind of free parts of the Ottoman Empire, but the remaining parts. And, and you have many uh, Austro-Hungarian settlers coming from Czech Republic, from Austria, from Croatia, and many of them uh, architects and, and, and cultural workers. And, uh, um, this is what, what Sarajevo cityscape looked like only 30 years. So if you just imagine this is a, a difference, um, it's a vast difference if you ask me if in, in just 30-ish years. So this is just uh, the same time period as we have now until the, you know, the, the last war started. So 30 years, it can be a lot to a city. And this is something that is uh, very visible also in this, in this um, image where this let the first wave of modernization that came with the Austro-Hungarians and then after the First World War, and of course, then was uh, highly um, experienced a high speed after the Second World War. And then especially, and now we are jumping already to, to, to the 80s, uh, experienced an incredible, you know, sort of experienced an incredible construction and building boom. So um, I remember there was one of the episodes uh, when I was a kid of the Simpsons where, where they were talking about the, the Olympics in, in what's the name of the city, the Springfield or something. And then they, um, they, they compare this to Sarajevo, right? So the Springfield is going to experience the same kind of construction boom. So this mega event is going to bring progress, prosperity, um, you know, um, to our city. And so Sarajevo is, 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 is kind of a symbol of many things. And this is what, what I found very uh, fascinating as a, as a teenager, young person to hear about this kind of, you know, my little city somewhere in the Balkans, it's, it's kind of world famous for many things. And, and one of it is this kind of Olympic, um, you know, infrastructural and urban development it experience. And unfortunately, it, the, the tragic that happened to the city um, just a couple of uh, years later, as you all know, and of course, then in this situation today. So this is again for, for the ones, and I think the most of you who are in the audience um, are uh, already visited Sarajevo a couple of times. So, so you don't need the special explanation, but this is a, um, an image of Sarajevo today, right? Of this kind of highly urbanized uh, valley, which you can see in the back of the image is this, um, if you want socialist, uh, large scale infrastructural um, development that uh, now um, is, is being very interesting for um, architectural theorists and curators, um, including the ones from the Museum of Modern Arts in New York and around the world. So again, Sarajevo is this kind of, you won't meet many average tourists, if I may be so rude, but you will meet these kind of, you know, curators of the MoMA and, and PhD students who walk around there, the city. So these are the kind of people who visit Sarajevo. And of course, there is a kind of wave of, of, of tourism that now kind of arrived as well. But but it, interestingly, uh, I, I feel that kind of urban, it's urbanism, uh, both its tragic parts and, and, its, and its glory parts are somehow you now being exposed. So the whole city becomes uh, a sort of a, a, a kind of big exhibition, if you want. So it, it is, the city exposes itself and the city um, you know, causes reminiscence to so many things to people who visit it. So, so if you have people from, you know, from Belfast, they 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 see and for the unfortunate kind of administrative and ethnic lines, right? You have you know many friends from from the from the um, from Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, who 
of course, see something of their own everyday life in the city. And obviously, our Austrian friends and colleagues see, see also something, et cetera, et cetera. So Sarajevo is this kind of, um, kind of bricolage or an amalgam of, of these influences. And I, and I find, you know, many times people ask you, so what is this kind of Bosnian or Sarajevan? What is the architecture? Or what is the landscape of it? What is the, what is the public space? And I believe um, that exactly what we see here, this is Sarajevo, Sarajevo is this kind of amalgam of different influences. And, uh, and I uh, think it's a unique, uh, you know, uh, open air exhibition in the world. And this is what the city really is. So there is no, um, you know, particular style, even though, the, you know, you look at the city hall here on the, on, the, on, the, on the very, you know, it takes a prominent space in this image as well. Uh, you know, this was something that was, um, as a, if I may do a, a little discourse in, in, into the past and, um, you know, called the Bosnian style, but it's way beyond that. So, I mean, there is nothing like a particular style to, um, to the city. Um, if you allow me, I will just uh, realize that uh, I speak a bit longer than I thought, so I will have to plug in my computer. So if you just give me a um, 20 seconds of the break to take a sip of water and just plug in my computer and I'm going to be back with you. And in the meanwhile, just maybe you recall what you heard and, and, and think of the first question you can ask. So I'm back. Huh? I, I... So I hope you can still see the presentation. Everything good? Very good. So, um, um, yes, and, um, you know, there's many images I could show it to you that um, that symbolize and and that how to say evoke and provoke a, a reaction to audiences wherever you talk about Sarajevo is one of these images that out of Wehrmacht, the German occupational army in 1941, is is removing the uh, this um, you know memorial plate devoted to Gavrilo Princip, right, the assassinator of, of Franz Ferdinand and Sofia. 1914 and bringing it to um, to um, to Hitler personally, who was uh, located in in his um, you know uh, mobile stab uh, headquarters somewhere in in, in Lower Al Austria, and uh, I think this is an image that uh, I'm not sure. I think Muharrem Basdu or uh, found it somewhere in the, in, in archives. So uh, this is an incredible image that. Um, that shows again how important for, for Hitler and for, for his kind of new world order um, was this defeat that Germany experienced in the First World War and his, himself as, a, uh, as an infantrist in somewhere in the, in the, in the, in the bunkers of, of Belgium. And so for him occupying Sarajevo and taking down this plate was an incredible symbol of, of, of revenge and defeat. And, and this is, Sarai was the only place where this, such a memorial plate could stand. So in this sense, again, uh, this small city in this very narrow valley of Milatska is, is, is part of, of global history. And in this sense, I, I believe you can see it very well in this collage, um, you know, how, how it's, um, you know, the, the, the lucky and the less lucky parts of human history and how it, they, um, you know, they kind of, crystallized and, and manifested themselves physically in the city. And, um, and this is where I, I maybe a little bit kind of this uh, here, uh, a little discourse is um, on looking into global cities. So I had the, the pleasure as part of the ETH 
and, and, and beyond to look into global cities. And uh, this is a book that you can find online and download if someone talking too much about it. But this is a, a book that uh, collects case studies from um, almost 40 cities around the world, from Detroit, from Beijing, from Sao Paulo, from Berlin, from London, from Caracas, from um, Pearl River Delta in, in China. And this is what um, was also part of, of my, um, uh, let's say, career activities te to teach. And we, we at ETH of Zurich, where I had this pleasure to do that, um, we believe that teaching architecture, infrastructure, landscape students uh, very, hmm, let's say, um, vague theories of, uh, of, of urbanism and, and, and buzzwords, we really believe that extracting the knowledge from the city itself. But again, how can you understand you know, Detroit uh, and its de-urbanization if you don't understand its bankruptcy, if you don't understand its um, deindustrialization that that it experienced in since the 70s and the 80s, and you, you maybe many of you know the Michael Moore movies that that this is being kind of exhibited and exposed. So in this sense, kind of knowing a history, an economy, an e ecology, and the social strata of a place is something that that is incredibly important to know and this is where the only uh, you know and the space and architecture and landscape and urbanism are just uh, lenses if you want to instruments to understand the place and try to and this is what this book is also about to if we work somewhere we have to amplify its potential so it's not about this big intuitive conceptual design of uh, um, of the very uh, highly um, respected postmodernist architect it's about understanding of processes and so this book is a is a kind of global uh, catalog of that and Sarajevo is part of it. So this is why I'm showing it. And Sarajevo has always been a very prominent, um, you know, case in this global catalog. And this is something, the reaction that I experienced throughout the world um, from Berlin to Barcelona to uh, webinars and, and, and physical presentations in, in Abu Dhabi and, and around the world. So this is again, something that kind of fascinates me with, with, about my hometown. and. And now I made a crash course of, you know, how, how Sarajevo became the Sarajevo we know today. And of course, after the, after the, first, the Second World War, um, and now I'm, 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 I'm simplifying it because of, of the time uh, uh, limitation here, but of course Sarajevo uh, has been um, you know, now in the center, from periphery, that was in the center of Yugoslavia. In Yugoslavia, it's five-year plan, Petrogodzhny plan. And it's kind of new um, social and societal and political uh, vision and reality where infrastructure again and industrialization and urbanization becomes the tools to to create the new you know the new Yugoslavia if you want to not only its economy and and improve the illiteracy but also to create a kind of a new if you want a new person and and this is why you know on, on the right hand side this Tito uh, we're looking the the um, the model, the maqueta of Skanderia is, is a just, you know, something to, 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 to show again how important the public space and public buildings were to this regime and to this, you know, to this politics. And, and Tito is this kind of incredible, you know, you know uh, jongleur between these worlds and now being the, um, you know, the good guy in 1948 saying, you know, Stalin and Stalin is on the, on the right, like it is this picture there's the devil looking on the Balkans and Tito is this hero in this white suit and the, and the cover of the light magazine is an, is an image again that it has its you know if you want urbanistic dimensions and this is the first general urban plan from the early 60s for Sarajevo but exactly this vision of a new uh, emancipated industrialized urbanist um, you know a person um, was uh, was created was designed and you know there is so many of these um, um, you know, documents to find how, how the city was really planned and what kind of ideological and spatial and if you want very scientific, um, you know, uh, parameters, criteria were used to do it. And, you know, this is um, you know, just if you zoom in and in the back, you see the, the new train station, one of the first renderings of it. So the first kind of, 
you know, plan, if you want, for Marin Dvor, Marin Dvor again as this kind of, um, you know, the contested and, and, and dynamic part of the city. And it's, um, if you want, also from today's perspective, you know, there is all these new theories of landscape, ecological urbanism, but even uh, Jura Neidhardt's uh, plan for Marin Dvor and then for the, for the as, a, as a kind of new city center of the new capital for the new socialist republic capital that is now in the center of something, it's in the center, in the geog geographical center um, of, uh, of Yugoslavia. And even, you know, the, the kind of literal and uh, mathematically uh, calculated center of Yugoslavia was somewhere around Rakovic and close to Lidja. So Sarajevo was literally the center of this country. And even this kind of, you know, what, what is here, dark gray, those are, um, you know, green corridors that were designed and in a very, I would say, incredibly avant-garde and, and um, where green infrastructure was again a, an element to, to connect um, the city with its surroundings, but also create these kind of infamous or famous kind of ventilation corridors that everybody's talking about in Sarajevo today. And again, not going into these kind of plans that I, uh, I found with the help of uh, many friends and colleagues. And, and again, this is a this whole army of people that, 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 that worked, that we collaborated and, and became friends beyond this. So this is the kind of city center. This is the very interesting kind of collage technique to, to show different functions of Marin Vor, right? And, and again, Tito is looking into, into the architecture, into the implementation of this new um, uh, plans, right? And then on the left, and we all know it uh, here in the round, uh, Picasso, uh, uh, who, who, who painted this, the poster for, for the battle on the Neretva River, Tito, who invited all these Hollywood stars to, for the opening of the Skenderia Center. So, so in this sense, um, this very unfortunately empty and, and kind of, uh, you know, derelict place, one of the most, my, my places of my childhood, um, and it's almost unthinkable now to, to think of it as, as a place where in, in nowadays terms, there would be the whole the Hollywood elite, you know, coming to open, to inaugurate a, a public and a cultural building. So, so in this sense, Kandaria is this kind of center of sports, of youth, of culture, of art, be becomes this kind of, um, you know, uh, red car, like kind of large scale red, red carpet type of an event. And, and this is uh, something that, that was very astonishing to me to see again, kind of global, um, <laughs> global um, uh, prominence of people then coming to, to the city again and for the opening of a public building. And, it, and many of these images, right? How Sarajevo was imagined to be. And again, this is of course alphabetically, but this is the, the, uh, um, the, the opening of the Olympics in 84, where Yugoslavia was in, 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 in its kind of non-alignment and you all know about non-alignment. And, and I, I have to add here my note that this non-alignment was not invented in the late 50s and early 60s. I think that the regions in Sarajevo was non-alignment throughout the history created a non-alignment of Tito uh, in the 60s and 70s that then you know, brought you know, incredible uh, economic um, value to, to Yugoslavia. So all these friendships with, with, with Gaddafi on the, on the right, that's the smiling gentleman, and, and, and all the kind of US American presidents and his Tito's we all know it very well, I'm not going to detail this balancing between East and West is something that is based from in, its, in this history. So this is very interesting how a mm, disadvantage if you want to history can be turned into an advantage and this is why Sarajevo became a very wealthy city. You're having all the Energo Invest uh, contracts in, in to build infrastructure in Africa to brought incredible amounts of, of finances to the city. This is something that we, we kind of easily forget or, or Zrak or all these companies, they worked in, in Libya and in, in, in Iraq, this brought finances and this brought friendship, this brought you know, flow to the city. And this is something that I think now it's a bit other way, other way around, right? Now we have, I would say money, you know, coming in, in a, from a very questionable sources and not from, not from earning it through infrastructural projects in Sudan or Libya or Iraq. And of course, then it resulted in, the, in, in enough funding to build, uh, you know, these buildings like the Holiday Inn, Musée Revoluzzi, et cetera. I'm not going into details, right, of, of, of the kind of architecture of, of the non-aligned socialist Yugoslavia, 
but and now kind of coming to the to the very last part of my presentation if i then kind of jump in through uh what happened after all the milosevic um and uh i mean we all know what happened in, uh, after 87 and after um, 90 etc but again sarajevo and marin war becomes this kind of uh, you know uh, and, and zetra right as the um, uh, the Olympic Hall, the public buildings, the public space in Sarajevo becomes this kind of la last refugium to, um, to, to protest against the war, right? And this unfortunately didn't work out, but uh, you know, then something else happened, right? And we all know the kind of geographical changes that happened, uh, but what happened to the people and to the city. And this is something that I really believe should not only be looked, and this is very important for you to say, as this tragic, part or is this kind of you know historiography of the city i think we can learn a lot from what happened to Sarajevo from 92 to 95. so of course gen you know genocide herbicide happened and this is marin road this is Sarajevo in you know in the, in the mid 90s and of course you know bogdan bogdanovich the great he, he even co-defined what herbicide means right systematic destruction but also the kind of symbolic destruction of the of urban society and then Sarajevo it becomes this you know, if you now work, play video games, Sniper 2, etc., you can kind of walk around Sarajevo and play in 3D. So Sarajevo now is the kind of place that, that has been recreated in this war video games. And even the third world war starting in Sarajevo in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Japanese manga cartoon, right? You see the Avas Tower on the right. In, in Sarajevo becomes the, the place where the third world war in a, in a fictional future kind of projection starts. And this is something that you know, again, Sarajevo becomes this something uh, for the world. But of course, we know the, what happened to the public space. And I, my argument here is that uh, Sarajevo you know, started avoiding its public space. So the public space of modern war that was the basis of the peace protest now became deserted, becomes, of course, lethal, deadly. And, and all these uh, re-adaptations, um, uh, mutations of public space where we, we remember that we can grow food in the city in the most difficult part uh, of, of our history. And we remember that there's different ways to use water and, and electricity. And I'm, 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 I'm obviously romantic about it here, but I think this is something that uh, we forgot when we were planning infrastructure on a large scale. And all these, you know, um, Susan Sontax and uh, Henri Lavi who, who, who came to the city and, and of course the Bill Woods as pretending to be a journalist and then that, you know, developing his kind of, uh, you know, whatever constructivist uh, visions for its reconstruction, talking about reconstruction, right? But again, what it meant to the people. And this is the, an image that it's from the courtyards of these cultural events that happened throughout the war. And I think most of you know it, but of course it's very interesting to understand how culture and art become a form of, um, uh, form of, of, of resistance, if you want, right? And again, you know, just not going into details, mapping that what architects did from designers to, to, uh, um, uh, to people who map out the destruction, right? So the whole architectural profession changed. And um, there's many of, of this kind of the generation I had the pleasure to speak to and, 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 and have the material from is a very interesting one, you know, how to use, use, shape your kind of everyday practice to something completely else. And of course, the Sarajevo of today and, and, and again, um, Jim's images are going to be forever this kind of symbol of us understanding about the, the radical spatial transformations. But um, for me, uh, and then and now to kind of jump in where we now, right, in this kind of Dayton or post-Dayton era, um, we are again in a, in a, in a situation of, of you know, fragmentation of, of periphery. This is Dobrin and Lukavica. But you see how suddenly infrastructure ends somewhere, uh, which is on an administrative border from the front line. You know, where you see all this kind of generic, uh, how to say, third class architecture from peripheries of, of whatever cities around the world and come to the city. And this is, it becomes kind of a, a, a kind of a, a, a vision for its urbanism and architecture is this kind of glass facade that is, uh, you know, a, a symbol of, of, of many things, but not what Sarajevo really is about. And again, you know, um, Sarajevo still does not have its new general urban plan. So the last is this one. It was 
you know, finished around the Olympics. Um, nowadays, looking to the city, we do have these mutations. We have different new, uh, you know, I think it's the only country where you have the, you know, American ambassador and the president coming to open the McDonald's restaurant. So there's new identities, if you will, right? Um, and there is new realities in, in, its, in its culture, in its uh, art world that we know about what the, the state of the museums. We know about the state this is of, of, of Sarajevo and many other cities in the region. So you see this kind of hybrid informalities happening in Belgrade as well, where there was no kind of you know, sniper fire and no grenades, but the, the kind of socialist architecture becomes a, a kind of a, a basis for kind of mushroom-like growth of informality um, in its physical form, but also in symbolic form. And this is where I feel the protests in 14 and uh, uh, the kind of based in and, and kind of what, what our, if I say our, this is many, many friends and colleagues, including Kuma, including Claudia, including many of you who, who are with us today is to really discuss this, what's going on in the back. You see Mark uh, um, Hubier's, uh, Mark Hubier's um, oil painting who, 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 who I invited to, to kind of uh, document uh, this discussion that's happening in the Dom Lad in Kenderia. Um, about what the city is used to be and what it should be in the future in terms of green culture, sustainability, etc. So, so all these friendships and and uh, uh, and that that emerged on the way, um, uh, in this kind of less formal and very formal parts of of whatever we call it, uh, this reactive Sarajevo or the urban transformation, which you can see here, that ended up even in one of these kind of first digital maps for um, for the city that ended in, 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 in these models done with the Faculty of Architecture. Um, and, and of course, uh, you know, many of the architects and friends who, who are sitting here today, they, they were part of it. And kind of this artistic action together with the Dani Architecture, the architecture days to, to, to kind of mark these forgotten, you know, decaying remnants of the past, like the Museum of Revolution or the Historical Museum. Is, is something that I feel the great art, the arts uh, and installation and performance can help to, to make us think. And I like you to take the look. I mean, without the, the kind of heroic act of, of the, the, the friends from architecture days, this wouldn't be possible, but again, um, this kind of artistic um, uh, performance was something that made many, uh, you know, people, many, um, you know, just people who just passed by, that there is a certain, you know, cultural space, there is a something that we, we, we have to think how to reprogram it and reactivate, and this is where, where um, I have many conversations about what is this reactivation, so I, I believe the city is active, so it has always been active city in many terms, and I believe sometimes we, we just have to re remember it and reactivate it. And this is what these designs also for the, the, the public space around the museum that we exhibited at the Venice Biennale in 2016 um, is something that the whole, or many, many uh, police and people from around the world seen. And uh, I believe this was another act that, uh, that got us some attention and got uh, many of these friendships uh, reacted with many people who came to our pavilion in Arsenal in Nord in Venice asked us, hey, what we know about Sarajevo from the Olympic Games and, and, and this in the war, but what's Sarajevo now? So that's why we called our exhibition at the Venice Bina Sarajevo now. And this is just a little glimpse of how uh, surprisingly attractive it got for, you know, foreign and local media and, and, and if you want, uh, you know, politicians who, who started, uh, um, you know, uh, how to say, being interested in what's going on but i really believe you know we can we can protest again um and and say look um you know we are these enemies of 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 this and that and we can uh, you know, try to be everybody's darling but uh, i i work for example with the city of sarajevo since 2012 so i worked with the last five mayors i think and i i really believe that there is more um, common space than conflict, and uh, this uh, this everyday politics I experience now um, is is something that I'm I'm not very proud of, and I really believe that talking and communication and gathering, and not only that, but also 
visualizing what whatever vision we have for a place is something that we have to do. So if we if we divide ourselves into these different uh, kind of um, you know different groups, different different tribes, this is not where uh, where, where Sarajevo that I imagine and the Sarajevo that I, I think the history um, remembers and the Sarajevo that survives all of this is going to be. So I really believe that we have to 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 uh, again and that we are many ways but uh, but be, be more of the center of the symbolic cultural center of the balkans and beyond we have to think about our friendships around the world we have to uh, as as pathetic as it sounds but we have to go beyond this kind of very small scale if you want very primitive political conflicts on an everyday basis that, that just becomes kind of personal conflict but this is something i completely don't believe in and i really believe in collaboration and and, and discussion so this is where you know, um, I, I maybe leave you with that thought and, and this beautiful image of Jim's from our pavilion in, in, in Venice. So thank you for your attention while on the page. Thank you, Haris, so much for your presentation. And I think I'm very glad that we started this Architecture Month with your uh, particular lecture. I think you set a very good historical overview of the shifting boundaries and how Sarajevo was always somehow on the periphery and always kind of negotiating that shifting boundary. And yet at the same time, um, it, it was able to absorb whatever the new influence came, but remaining true to the old. So you mentioned that idea of layering and you mentioned that idea of um, withstanding the, the old, withstanding the new and kind of um, this, this collaboration. Um, throughout a history. And then when we get to the current situation, I maybe before I open up the floor, I wanted to ask you about your thoughts. Um, I, I really like this project that you were a part of, and I think it's a really good starting point as a discussion. I'm wondering, um, based maybe on the on that exercise and based on, on what you have been through, through the process of uh, reactivating or, or attempting to reactivate Sarajevo, what, what are your thoughts um, in terms of maybe a strategy or or kind of, I wouldn't say a master plan or a, or a totalitarian vision, but maybe what are your thoughts on a process that would actually work in the local context? Because we know, we know our political context and we know our economical context and we know, um, well, the ones who are from Sarajevo, but I'm sure many people who are not here joining us, they're kind of aware of the situation. I'm just wondering if you have some ideas about, um, you know, creating a process that would actually work um, within this context and that would sure. actually involve, like you talked about involvement of the citizens, participatory architecture perhaps, but even creating a strategy that would withstand the changes, the continuous changes of political powers, you know, sure. and, and, and the lack of continuity. And, and the lack of a bit of um, lack of a vision at the, at the moment, um, kind of going back to that idea of withstanding different shifts of historical and political changes and always being on the periphery, yet always kind of remaining true to itself and always having a certain identity that translates into architecture and urbanism. So I'm just wondering your thoughts. I mean, you, you've spent a lot of time um, on this, obviously. So what, what are your thoughts for, for, the, for the future? Sure. No, that's what I think that that's I think the central point you know what do we do with all of it and I didn't mention it here um, uh, in, in detail but I believe that the next step and this is what they happen now they are as we talk here they are happening in the very different um, levels and layers um, so these activities they fed so many um, different um, you know activities uh, instruments and, and this is where, if I summarize it, I think Sarajevo should work on three scales. And one scale is a, a new urban vision, um, a, a kind of veritable urban vision. Um, and this is something that this general urban plan methodology from the 60s is um, with its own incredible scientific excellence and the ideological load is something that it's, it's not gonna produce a new vision. So this is a, a kind of, um, it's a very schizophrenic situation where you have this kind of socialist urban planning tools and a post-socialist reality. You know, this is a kind of incredible uh, uh, discrepancy of, of the 
the Jure um, instruments and the facto um, situation on the ground. So this is the big problem. And I really believe that Sarajevo needs a new urban vision and a vision that uh, it's not only nice renderings and, and, and 3D models, this vision has to have a clear governance concept, how it works. And this is something what this kind of next phases of Vehicle with Sarajevo are about. It means a governance that happens in different other levels of of, um, of of the public realm, but also includes experts, includes citizens, includes the formal you know, representation of citizens, just like the Miesne Zajnice. So, uh, so in this sense, the first layer is this vision of the kind of city and beyond scale. And this has to be a veritable one with the, with a the financial dimension, with a governance dimension, and a vision that absorbs all the influences that come. And we have the Chinese, we have the Russians, we have the Japanese, we have the Swiss, we have all these friends, if you want, who or, or people who are just like walking uh, or working in our city. And this is incredibly fragmented. You know, I, in Abu Dhabi at the World Urban Forum, I meet a, a person from the Japanese development agency who, who does a mobility strategy for Sarajevo, who, who the others then don't know about. So we have so many of these friends that, that this non-alignment of our city brought, we have to integrate them better and, and, and make, them for, make them of use. You know? So there's, as we speak now, 10 different kind of um, urban mobility and other strategies happening in Sarawak, not synthesized, not coordinated. And this urban vision needs to coordinate that. And then if we break it down, we have to, to work um, you know, on our city center. Marin Vod is has never been finished. It's a, very good example of unfinished modernism. So this this kind of uh, you know district um, vision and plan needs to be uh, worked on. And this is not the regulation plan. So again, we we need new, new, new instruments. It's not the one to five thousand regular. It's not a regulatory plan. It it you know the marine dwar is the political, commercial, intellectual, scientific center. If you take the campus and the cultural, if you take the museums and the future RSAV. Of our country, so it's not a it's not a it's not a question of a building code, you know, and of the regulation plans. And on the third level, I really believe in in, in interventions and in in public space and public buildings. And this is why this kind of if you want design uh, for the readaptation of the historical museum, and especially the public space around. When we forget that the Miljatska was the front line, right? You know, if you were in Grbavica and Kovacici, you could go to to Vladivostok, right? <laughs> if you were on the other side, the Marin Dvor, where I lived, in the, you know, you could go, uh, you know, to the, you know, to to Yevresko and then like hit hit your hit the wall, right? So in this sense, we have to we have all these incredible symbolic spaces in our city, and this is where the people of Sarajevo are very proud of it. You know, you look at what happens in Hastahana and many other places, and this is why I believe this participatory, uh, inclusive processes, and this is not Yavna Ras Pravajin. Again, we need new instruments is something and you know you know people call it city labs or living labs in, in, in the Netherlands and something. So so I think there are these instruments that that are now kind of in in in, in uh, hopefully gonna be uh, you know reality soon and this are uh, gonna bring the kind of strategic vision, new kind of district scale and new publics and building and scale interventions to the city. But again, not vision a dream but a, a dream with with layers of information that our friends can help us to implement it, you know, with funding, with knowledge, with, with advice, et cetera. And, and this is something that if we do it, then we, again, it's like in the eighties, uh, the knowledge was from Sarajevo, from end of the invest was fed into the world. And now we are, we are a bit on the other side of the pendulum. Now we take knowledge, but again, that's the reality. And we, I think we integrate it better. We have more use of it. I also think giving the architectural association a little bit more legal power to actually maybe mediate some of these processes might be um, a good move, but that's just my personal opinion. So I don't want this to become a dialogue between just the two of us. I would like to open up um, the floor uh, to the participants and we have many participants. I see that Sabina has a question. So Sabina Tanovic um, is saying, um, thank you, Haris, one question. How familiar are you with architectural education in Sarajevo? Is there potential to generate change or more critical thinking in terms of responsibility of architectural profession 
also what is the state of architectural activism in Sarajevo? So that's a question from Sabina Tanic. Sabina, thank you for your question. Hey, hi, Sabina. No, thank you for the question. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar. <laughs> I studied there, did my diploma with Professor Milinovic. So um, I know Burch University, I know the IUS. I know the, I'm one of the co-founders of the Landscape Architects Association of Bosnia or in Bosnia. I'm a member of the Architectural Association. So I'm, I know very well the, uh, the, the school in Banja Luka, the, the, the civil society in Banja Luka, et cetera. So I'm um, very, very much aware of the situation. And um, this maybe touches what you just said, Leila. I mean, uh, I believe nobody is going to give to to the architects, to the landscape architects, uh, and on the silver plate, a, a a voice or kind of a legal status. Of course, you know, you know, all these associations they are not even formally, you know, chambers. Um, they are associate uh, associatia u Bosnia Herzegovina. So in in this sense, uh, you know, the the legal power is 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 very. Uh, weak, but I would say the knowledge and the relational power is strong. And I, this is where I really believe it's it's not about um, criticism. It's not about cynicism. That's that you know we are very good at in Sarajevo. Uh, it's not about um, uh, inventing uh, you know problems, and we have enough problems. I really believe that uh, the level of arch architectural landscape architectural activism is high. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that there is more uh, med mediatory and more constructive um, um, activism happening in the last year. So to write a, a poisonous article and to, to, to bash people and, and to, to kind of, uh, you know, be part of these political divisions that are so funny because many people kind of change all these parties from one to another. And and I believe that the, the names of the parties are not even representative to to what they what they really do in the political problem. So so taking this kind of being distanced from political uh, this very kind of uh, rumor level small scale politics is something that that um, architects and professionals have to be above, even though many of them are part of political parties. But now we have to you know avoid this conflict of interest and be this critical intellectuals and, and, and be, um, you know, just take our space in the society because I really believe that no one is gonna knock at our door and say, hey, here is a, uh, you know, as a, he is a, is a perfect situation, he has a chamber and he has everything. So I really believe that, um, again, level is high and uh, I'm, I'm happy to see how the, the young generation is gonna pick up on that and, and make it a more, um, you know, if I be if I be critical to countries where I lived for many years, Germany and Switzerland, you have you don't have any architectural activism, or very little, right? You have the chambers who regulate things, who who of course formally represent the profession, but there's no enough. And now only with the climate change, uh, with the social issues, with Corona, there is kind of let's say activism appearing. There is architects for climate change in Switzerland that didn't exist two years ago, right? So, so, so I would say, um, we, even though if one day the Architects Association got super formalized, we should not you know, become this kind of regulatory uh, body, it should still have this activism in it. Okay, thank you, Haris, for, the, for answering Sabina's question. Um, do we have any more questions from the audience? You can type, type them in or you can turn on your mic and, and ask. Um, Please don't be shy. Any more questions? I think Claudia has a question, but we can't hear you, Claudia. I'm sorry. Yeah, now my mic is on. Haris, I just would like to thank you so much uh, for your presentation. I was uh, um, I was looking at the you you chose like beautiful pictures of Sarajevo, and it was amazing to see this um, historical you know layers and different you know, the development of the city. And I love that you started showing, uh, you know, the very beginning of the history of Sarajevo when Bosnia was, uh, um, was uh, in between uh, Rome and Constantinople. It was really, really, 
for such a journey that we did tonight. And uh, I was just thinking, looking at the images of Sarajevo, how privileged I am to be able to live in such a in such a fascinating and beautiful city with such history as Sarajevo. So I'm really I'm really grateful. And I'm sure many of the people following the talk, um, probably maybe the people who are not familiar with Sarajevo, who never visited Bosnia, who were never here, I'm sure um, they now, you know, maybe they will plan a trip and come to see us here in Sarajevo. I really just want to say how grateful I am um, that I can live in such a place. So thank you. Um, so uh, Caroline says, thank you for your fascinating presentation. And I don't see any more questions from uh, the audience. Oh, I see there's a hand. Uh, Hella has a question. Hi, Hella. Hi, thank you so much for your presentation. It was so interesting. Um, I'm actually a fellow Zuricker. Mm -hmm. So any, whatever you want to do with that. But um, I, I wonder, just because it seems like from the side of sort of memorial museums and like visual culture, there's been a kind of a, a big investment in building up the, mem or, or I maybe I don't know enough, but there, there has been an investment in sort of building up the memorial culture in Sarajevo. And it seems like probably for financial reasons, there isn't the same, it hasn't been as much of a drive for architecture on the contrary, um, things that we may preserve like, remnants, architectural remnants that may be preserved um, or conserved in a way that where you can still see the memorial trace in other places have maybe been raised to the ground to, to put up things like banks in Sarajevo. So I wonder if that could be like, how do we generate more like investment of capital from a memory standpoint or as with that as the vector of the motor? Is that is that a potential? Sure. No, that, that's a, that's a good one and uh, good to meet uh, also fellow fellow, fellow Zurich uh, Sarajevo corridor uh, people. Um, there is an incredible focus on memorial culture in the post '90s war in Sarajevo uh, because many of the war veterans are receiving. Uh, their kind of veteran pension and this is the only income they have to survive and um, I would say their their war wounds and their patriotism and their uh, poverty if you want you know let's call the things their names and you know, let's not talk about you know, <laughs> let's talk about the elephant in the room is being instrumentalized by politicians in order to to, to get their votes, right? So it's a big vote, you know, there's many, many war veterans in Sarajevo. So this, it's, a, it's a strong voting body. And, and this kind of memorial culture becomes a, a physical manifestation of this instrumentalization and becomes a, a kind of ceremony of, of if you want also, uh, not so much um, honorable memorial, sites and, and, and situations where we remember our, our fallen and, and beloved ones, but it becomes a, a kind of epitome of self-pity and of, of kind of everyday political um, manipulations. And this is what I really believe that this whole funding of all the kind of expensive stone <laughs> monuments are, are, are a manifest of, of not of, of this, um, you know, fearless fight in the war, not of the, the cultural resistance, not of its kind of global uh, dimension that it reached, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of cheap uh, kind of performance. And this cheap performance in the metaphorical terms, not a cheap in terms of financial. So there's, a, and, and this is why I really believe that um, Sarajevo needs another um, way of, of not commemorating, but it needs, um, um, these people who want to make the Sarajevo as a victim city and, and, and even make it as a business model to foreigners to look what happened to us and even like pointing fingers to the West, we didn't stop that. I think that's the wrong business model. Sarajevo is a proud city. Sarajevo is a city that, that has more 
uh, you know, more more elegant ways to remember its fallen ones. And this is not what what I observe with these kind of cheap uh, performances and memorials that pop up around the country. And 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 you know, I don't want to compare this with this Pomenix, right, of the of Tito's era and 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 their kind of you know artistic value they have, right? That's culturally, aesthetically. Uh, but um, I feel uh, this is this is why you know many decades after these people from all around the world come to see it and come to understand it and this is maybe uh, maybe a little lesson we can still learn from the past without comparing these two different wars and, and conflicts this is not you know uh, um, something that, that that is to be compared but the memorial culture is, is something that we we have to think of, of of what happens you know after after we forget after all the war victims are you know after we all gone so what's it what's, what's how's gonna set ever remember it's war in 50 years i am i'm this that's, that's an open question still thank you thank you Haris. and if for those who are interested in this topic uh maybe a little bit more in depth we are going to actually host sabina tanovich who's going to touch up on memorialization uh in post-war sarajevo so Please join us on, uh, it's going to be, Sabine is going to present on October the 19th. So that's going to be a Tuesday uh, to maybe uh, explore this topic a little bit uh, further. And we have one more comment from the audience. So Michael says, thank you for the presentation and thank you for speaking in English. Not a question, absorbing outside influences along with collaborative thinking seems like a healthy and contemporary work practice when reimagining Sarajevo. No, th thank you. And I have to react to this. And uh, we are pretty advanced in the evening. But thank you, Michael. And, uh, and I have to add this, you know, wherever I go, I see, again, understanding Sarajevo, I see Sarajevo or Sarajevo's phenomena in Berlin, in Beirut, in, in the US, in, in, in everywhere. Now with the Corona crisis, I see Sarajevo everywhere. And you know, growing up in Sarajevo and being part of this, um, you know, exciting, you know, dynamic history is something that um, that made me uh, adapt or made me not adapt, understand better what happens in, in, in when I when I arrived to Berlin to '95. Right, this was the divide, still a mentally divided city, etc. So I knowing about uh, you know Sarajevo's history and about you know this kind of east and west it helped me to understand my new home. So in this sense, um, this is why, and, and you talk uh, um, also about collaborative uh, thoughts. I mean, Sarajevo as the symbol of, of community, of Mahala, of Raya, is for me something that this is actually Sarajevo. So the kind of small scale political conflict that, I, that, that we listen to when you open these portals is something that I don't associate with Sarajevo. And I, and I lived in Sarajevo for, and studied there and, and for, for you know, two you know, two thirds of my life. So in this sense, this, this kind of collaborative thinking is something that I actually took from Sarajevo. It's not that I, something I, I found in Zurich or, or, or found in, in, in Abu Dhabi or somewhere else. Of course, you know, living in different spaces and places, you absorb and you learn new things. But if you saw some of these images with these people, I, I have to say, I, I, I disagree on many things with many of them. <laughs> it's not that I, uh, I um, uh, that we, but this is actually it. So if I, if I summarize my modest contribution to reactivating city is kind of bringing these different voices together. And now these different voices, uh, they, they now kind of go into these uh, layers of, of products of, of what I mentioned to you, Leila, right? This plans, vision, and strategies. So in this sense, kind of, you know, bringing different voices together that I did with many other people, uh, uh, is something that that is 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 for me that that Sarajevo and Sarajevo is not these kind of uh, fights that we experience sometimes now. So again, Sarajevo is Raya and Mahala, and this is the kind of you know collaborative um, dimension of it. For sure, for sure. Uh, we have one more comment from Sinada. Sinada Habibia, who's also going to be one of our guests uh, further uh, down uh, the line, she will be speaking next week on Tuesday. Uh, she says, thank you for your lecture. Very inspiring. I believe that you can see Sarajevo in Mostar. And maybe the future of our cities is to look to each other more in the future. Thank you, Senada. And I, I also have to react on these beautiful words, uh, just like what, what Michael and uh, what Sabina and the others told, um, Claudia and you, Leila. Um, um, 
the urban toolbox that I've shown is, is, is if you say New York in, 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 in Graz, you know, people said, oh, no, 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 New York, uh, it's, 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 something, it's a big different city in the America, et cetera. If you say Berlin in, in, in Basel, you know, so, so, so there are all these kind of um, uh, stereotypes that we are, we, are, we are imagine, including us, including me, and this urban toolbox was to cross compare cities around the world. What does deindustrialization of Detroit has to do with deindustrialization of East Berlin and what it means for its spaces and what we can learn from its architecture? What does small scale activist architecture after the crisis in 2007 in Athens and Madrid can learn from each other? And of course, you know, if, if, if you zoom out, uh, you know, the, the, there's so many comparable phenomena, of course, Mostar and Sarajevo, you know, they're, many, they're different cities, but there there's so much similarities that, you know, that we comprise in these tools. And we say tool, the tool is an experience from a city and, 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 and this can be also used elsewhere. So in this sense, there's so much more, you know, similarities I found in Latin American cities with, with Romanian cities. You know, sometimes these, um, these, these comparisons are a bit, you know, not welcome, so if I say, you look, I've seen something in Medellin and this reminds me of Sarajevo <gasps> people, you know, and, uh, so, and if I, I say, I've seen something in, in Vienna and this reminds me of Sarajevo, then and, and there is way, you know, the le lesson learned from the people from a place go beyond the stereotypes. So, uh, so I really, uh, Sanada, I look forward to, to your uh, intervention and uh, happy to, to discuss on some other occasion, you know, what, 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 what can Sarajevo learn from Osta? Thank you. Thank you, Sanada. Thank you, Haris. I think it's getting um, it's getting a little bit late in the evening, and yes. so maybe it's time to wrap up. And so it's been such a great pleasure to have you, Haris, for the first time at Kuma, but I'm sure not for the last. So we look forward to seeing you again and to maybe meeting in person as well. Um, thank you so much for your lecture tonight. Um, next week we're going to have Nadia Habash with us. Um, she's an amazing uh, woman with an incredible. Um, CV, um, she's, um, she's going to be talking about architecture as resistance. And so I won't talk about her too much tonight, not to spoil um, next week's introduction. And so once again, um, from on behalf of all of us, thank you all for being with us tonight and see you on Thursday at the same time. Thank you, Hi. Thank you again for the invitation. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. It's been a beautiful start of, of the architecture month. I'm really, really happy. Uh, Harris, thank you one more time for being with us. And, um, and hopefully see you all on Thursday for Nadia's lecture. I'm really excited. We're gonna be talking about Palestine, the West Bank and the architecture as a form of resistance. I really look forward to that conversation. So thank you very much everyone once again and have a great rest of the day and see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>